All right, America, and whoever in the world is listening, you just got to be clear on some things right now. My name is Rukia Hadassah, and I am a daughter of Zion, and I am a watchman for the kingdom of Yahuwah, who is the one and only and true living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, <clears throat> of which I am a descendant. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> this is judgment. This is judgment. And I'm saying this in no uncertain terms. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the kingdom of Yahuwah, who is the God of my fathers. And I am giving this message, and whoever has an ear to hear, let him hear. This is apocalypse, this is revelation, and this is not uh, a joke. Okay. Yah is not playing. He is not playing. The Most High Yah is not playing. He's not playing. He's patient. But he is not playing. And you can rationalize my words away however you want. But I know I can read. And I know what I've learned in reading the prophecies that my ancestors wrote. I have not fallen for the lie that uh, our enemies have tried to pass on to us and say that the Bible is the white man's book or the Bible is no 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 see if you don't understand your enemy you're able you're gonna fall for his tricks so what they're doing is and this is very basic strategy for people who are trying to uh, destroy another people if they can't destroy you they will discredit you Okay, so uh, they can't destroy the word of the Most High because it was already all over the world by the time they got their hands on it. It had already been distributed. So they knew that they were not able to destroy the word of God, the written word of Yahuwah, but they had to take the second best option and that's discredit it. And also they attempted, before discrediting it, they attempted to, uh, to disguise it and to hide it. And so I don't want to get too far down that road. I know why I believe the word of God is true and I believe that my ancestors wrote this word. I didn't just wake up and somebody whispered this in my ear. I've tested this word. Okay, those of you who are trying to discredit it, you haven't even read it. You don't even know what it says. You haven't even prayed for understanding. So if you don't do that, you will not understand. The Bible I'm reading today is a completely different book than the Bible that I was reading as a, a child and a teenager and a young adult. And even in my 30s into my 40s, I have only recently gotten an understanding of why this book was written, why it says what it says. Okay, this is, this is my journey and my path into knowledge and understanding. And it's very personal to me. So... I can't open your head up and your mind up 
and give you the same understanding that I have because this is the type of understanding you've got to pray for. You've got to seek. And so as a follower and a disciple of Yeshua, I go by his words because they are trusted. They are tested. They are tried and they are true. Just because they haven't been true for you doesn't mean it hasn't been the case for me. So as a person who has performed my own examination of the word, I've decided this is the truth. Because I tried it, I tested it, I gave my all to understanding it. And 99% of the people out there who claim to read the Bible, know the Bible, study the Bible, love the Bible, follow the Bible, obey the Bible, 99% of them have not prayed for the full understanding of this word. Because if they did, uh, this world would be in harmony right now. And we wouldn't have a thousand versions of it floating around and everybody's trying to take it and twist it and turn it into what they think it should say and what they want it to say. No, we're done with that. That is not the route we're going. The word is true. No matter what you try to say, no matter what you try to do, no matter how you've rationalized it out in your mind, the word is true. And so that's why I tell people, if you're going to come down this rabbit hole, you're going to need a whole lot of rope because I'm already past these arguments that you've made. I'm deep, deep, deep in this thing. And so to have someone come and try to challenge something I've already tested. It's like if you go and you see a chair and you sit on that chair and you see somebody else is sitting on that chair and they get up and you ask them, you know, hey, is this chair safe? And I tell you, you know, based on my experience and what I had, my experience with that chair, okay, it's safe. I can tell you to a certainty that, you know, you can sit on the chair and the chair will support you. But if you see me sitting on the chair and you see the chair wobbling back and forth and it's breaking and making noises and and I stand up and you come up to me and you say hey is that chair safe and I say oh yeah it's fine sit on it and then you sit on it and you fall whose fault is that we both have to own it because you saw me on a shaky chair and then I lied and told you so I'm not gonna do that in this hour I take my soul too seriously to be playing with this word in this hour. You have to be crazy to do that right now. I am not here on any agenda. I don't ask people for donations. I'm not with a camp. I'm not with a church. I'm an individual who went on a journey to find the truth and when I did, this was the conclusion, and I'm trying to share this word as urgently as I can. And while I'm even saying that, I'm like real tired right now. <sighs> I'm no more tired than Yeshua was and has been and continues to be uh, not get tired in terms of physical tired like us, but just in the spiritual weariness of watching people continue to sin and make the wrong choices and live the wrong lives and 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 sow destruction to themselves and others <sighs> so i i want to make that i guess what you would call a forward to make sure people understand that there's no agenda behind the truth. The truth is just the truth. And there's some people out here right now that have been called to stand up and speak the truth. No matter what the consequences, no matter what the, the, the issues. And I remember 
to this day the very first time that I did that. As a matter of fact, it's recorded as January 27th, 2016. I mean, I've been walking and trying to share encouraging words and witness about the Most High, but the day I, I decided to just tell the truth, based only on what the Most High told me to say. There's no record of anything I said, but those words that he told me to speak in 2016 are manifesting now as he gave them to me today in 2019 on into the next upcoming year. Should we make it that far? I don't know what's happening. Uh, I don't pro proclaim to know, you know, all of these, you know, specialized details and information about prophecy. I just say it what I, I just say what I hear. And so I need people to understand that America is being judged. And um, the Most High is being merciful. Even now, I see it. Uh, and I think America sees it. There have been some very tragic events that have taken place. And these events are occurring at an increased fashion. Now, some of these events are indeed being initiated by human beings. But to believe that this is something called climate change, wherein we have poisoned or, or polluted the earth so much that there's somehow, some way we're going to clean this up. No. That's not going to happen. <clears throat> that is absolutely not going to happen. And so destruction has taken place uh, on a global scale. People don't hear about it because it's being uh, diverted to political junk news, fake news. They're creating the news. So... When Donald Trump says fake news, that's he means that. That is literally what you're looking at. These um, sketch comedy worthy moments that keep happening, it's to entertain you, it's to distract you, it's to keep your focus on the the the, the circus. Even as disaster continues to uh, swirl around you. You ever notice in um, a lot of these disaster movies that feature a president? Um, we, we're seeing a lot of similarities that, that we would typically see in disaster movies. The same type of weather phenomenon, earthquakes, volcanoes, fires, and such, and um, <laughs> whenever there's some type of disastrous situation going on, on a global scale, the president always comes on the monitor, and he's this beacon of calm and bravery, and <laughs> And everybody looks at him to, you know, be the leader. And, and so that's so not supposed to be the case in real life. Yeah, that's the one thing about Hollywood. They'll tell you the truth, but they'll wrap it in a lie. Okay, so the movies, as far as the disasters happening and everything, yes, that's exactly what's unfolding as the movies indicated, but... Your president was never meant to lead you in bravery. 
and call for patience and calm and that was that was never the plan their their plan has been to keep you distracted long enough so that you won't figure out what's going on and cause a panic and the idea behind all of this is to return you to normalcy you'll notice as soon as a disaster happens we'll get the report on it and then something crazy will jump off in the white house and it, it this has been the cycle the disaster the white house the dis since trump has been in office go check for every For every Trump stunt and debacle, there's been a natural disaster they were trying to divert from. Okay, major stories broke after Dorian, and see, it's it's with each increasing um, disaster, and with the you know uptick in the occurrences of the disasters, what's happening? <laughs> is the stunts become more and more sensational because the more the, the more sensational the story is the longer you're distracted and so you start just returning to normalcy again not realizing that you're probably going to be in the path of the next disaster unprepared because you're just sitting here watching the circus and you're not watching what's actually going on so my message today is for anybody under the sound of my voice if you can hear me I don't care where you are in the world okay this is judgment on America this is judgment upon all the nations of the world particularly the ones that continued to uh, destroy and harm this place and murder Yas people Yas chosen people now there's a lot of things that I've done in my research to forensically track my ancestry uh, to the land of Israel I'm not going to go into that right now <clears throat> excuse me uh, but I will say that a number of the lands that we were known to be in in great numbers uh, those lands right now are going undergoing some terrific and powerful plagues uh, Spain for one is for the sides country that it is uh, it's constantly enduring uh, plague-like um, phenomenon storms floods fires uh, this is a very this is you know comparatively speaking to the United States it's a small country I mean it's as big as you know one of the states of the United States not sure which one to compare it to uh, but it's it's a small country and so to have that many disasters within that small of real estate or that small an area of real estate you're really uh, looking at some plague in time events that are unfolding uh, same thing with Italy it's a small nation uh, there's not a lot of real estate there and they are enduring a great deal of what's going on 
uh, the earthquakes, the, the volcanoes, the, the hailstorms, the tornadoes. Uh, these things are going on throughout Europe. They are going on throughout South America. They are going on throughout the Middle East. Uh, we see Saudi Arabia, Iran getting hit, Iraq. Uh, these are nations that once uh, enslaved the, uh, the children of Israel. Okay? Indonesia. Don't know what happened there, historically speaking. I know I'll understand that better by and by, but Indonesia is constantly getting hit. Something has happened there. Um, China, Japan, that little small strip of land is constantly getting hit. They have played a role in our, uh, in our, in the captivity of Yas people. So, um, none of this is really up for discussion. I'm just giving you a reference background for me, for me and where I come from and why I'm sharing this information as I am. Because as a daughter of Zion who has been appointed to be a watchman to my people and to the nations at, at large, um, this information needs to be known, what I believe. And so I'm giving everyone the opportunity to hear it from me, from my mouth to your ears and go and research these things for yourself and I'm happy to provide any information that could help you in questions that you might have and direct you to the, some of the material that I've looked at and studied and maps that I've studied and and uh, different videos that I've seen that I try to you know, keep up with and, and, and share as needed. So, uh, I'm just one person and I've got a few resources and, you know, the rest is up to, to you to pray for discernment and, and to, you know, expect an answer. Yeshua said, if you ask, you will receive. And if you seek, you will find. And if you knock, the door will be opened unto you. That is something that I have tested, tried, examined, and found to be true, full of fruit. Uh, there's, there's no failure in that word. I have found that to be true. And I can point to specific events where that has, it has unfolded exactly as he spoke it. So st stuff like that's not up for discussion with me. And so that's where a lot of people tend to um, have issues, I guess. But I love my family, um, and uh, I've been trying to, to get them and, and um, neighbors and people that I know to hear this truth and to understand what time we are in. There was an event that took place on October 20th. Yesterday, we saw the Dallas, Texas Metroplex uh, struck with an EF3 tornado. And uh, the destruction has been unprecedented particularly in light of the fact that there were no fatalities. And it happened in the dark of night. This is something that I don't think, if you don't really sit down and process this, uh, the odds of there being no fatalities in an area as highly populated as Dallas, Texas, for an EF3 tornado to strike you at night while all these people were on the freeway and debris 
and sharp objects and trees and and whatever i mean anything that it could pick up it was tossing and shredding so dallas that was a warning shot not just for dallas it happened in dallas because the events that merited this type of judgment happened in dallas because that was the that was the epicenter of some very wicked things going on in this country in this nation right now and we know the most high knows what it is and i've been given discernment as to what it is but uh I'm not going to disclose it because people are not even at that level yet. So I'm not even going to go into the why uh, this is happening because people haven't even gotten to the point of even wanting to ask why. They just want to, and this is by design of our enemies and our oppressors, uh, they keep creating the the incident and causing you to become alarmed. I call them chain yanking events because uh, these these shootings of unarmed black people, <laughs> uh, we can clearly, if you're sitting here and you're working out logically with all of this, you know, the statistics and odds of, you know, this happening at such a higher percentage in our communities versus in their communities this is not just you know we already know but we're not punching through and understanding why this is happening we just keep barking about it and complaining about it but we're not necessarily digging deep and trying to get an understanding of why and so people are confused and they're angry and they get on social media and they start tweeting and they start doing videos and they start blogging or whatever and we keep this um, uh, uh, wash rinse repeat cycle like we keep going through the cycle of they put the story out and we react to the story and they, you know, react to the story in whatever way and they just kind of fuel it along until it fizzles out and then they give us another one. And this is by design, but I, people aren't at the point yet to where they can even process this because they're so worked up about the chain being yanked they're not paying attention to who's yanking it and they don't want to know they just want to keep barking at the chain being yanked and that's unfortunate because we have a great advantage We have a great advantage. Our ancestors wrote the word of God. They scribed it as inspired by the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, these are just some things people are not going to get. They're not going to grasp because they are too far gone in the indoctrination that our enemies have been attacking us with since our arrival in this land and uh, they've become more and more keen with it and we've lost our sense of understanding and truth and we're not getting to the bottom of things we're just kind of going with what we heard and so part of this Dallas 
Texas tornado system that went through um, that was a strategic location I'm sure people understand uh, this was not oh wow you know oops you know tornado drops down in Dallas <sighs> come on y'all and let's be clear this is the hand of the Most High God of Israel and no other. People that want to <laughs> invoke their ancestors as having being being the source there. I've seen this. This is this is so ridiculous to me to hear someone say our ancestors are doing this. Listen, if our ancestors had this kind of power they would have used it to keep us from going into slavery. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay? Our ancestors would have never sent their descendants through this because they would have never put themselves through it. But guess what? There's a righteous and a holy God who sits very, very high. His throne is the most high. And he requires sacrifice. He requires sacrifice. And because of the sins of our fathers, we have been caused to be punished and brought to this land. That also is not up for discussion. That happened. We don't have any issues beyond that. If if you if you and I agree on that, we're good. And we can build on that. But if we don't even agree on that, <laughs> we're not gonna get very far. So, um there are a lot of things out there that I can concede, I can put on the table. I can put up for discussion, uh, but once you get so far into the truth, <clears throat> excuse me, once you get so far into the truth, you will not be able to concede uh, a whole lot, but there are some things like, hey, if you can prove it, uh, I'm here to, to listen, and unfortunately, to this day, uh, since I've been speaking the truth, uh, according to the word of the Most High. I've not been successfully debated or or shut down by anybody. And that's not boasting. That's just what happens when you speak the truth. I don't have, a, you know, a formula for, you know, getting into an argument with someone and winning you know all I just know to tell you is just speak the truth and that's what people have gotten away from they don't want the truth and they don't want to speak the truth uh, they want their doctrines to be true and that's why everybody's cherry picking the word And going and trying to twist the scriptures to make them fit their agenda. Um, I don't care what word or what language you want to write it in or say it in or speak it in or read it in. Or what translation. I don't care. Uh, I read the word by the, the power and understanding of the Ruach HaKodesh. I don't read the word based on letters and ink on a paper on paper. That's not um that's not gonna serve me. That's how I tried to read it all my life. And that's why I never understood it. It was not until I began to pray for understanding that you know it's almost like being able to speak in 10 different languages when you are 
functioning according to the Ruach HaKadosh, it's like you can speak any language. And there's no, you know, boundary on how your understanding can be enlightened. Okay. But we need to, to get to a place now where if America does not repent, uh, your destruction is imminent. We need to understand that real fast, real fast, real fast. Dallas, Texas became the, the, the place for this event because there was two instances at least where these innocent people are sitting in their homes minding their own business they're law-abiding citizens and for some reason they keep turning out to be just stellar citizens good people We're supposed to you know love our communities and you know they go to school college educated take care of their families they're stellar individuals but they keep ending up dead in their own homes <laughs> That doesn't make sense. That's not supposed to happen. And so these individuals who were unable to enjoy the reasonable expectation that they could spend the evening in the safety of their homes, in the safety of their communities, and not expect to be shot by a public servant who was on their property allegedly doing a well check so um that that's of course referring to Atashiana Jefferson and then of course you know these are highly broadcast chain yanking events do you understand? These are not just, oh, well, what a bummer. We made a mistake. Oh, so sorry this happened. Uh, these are not, this is not that. These are uh, choreographed events that are taking place at the pleasure of our oppressors who need to keep making the black bodies build up. They need to keep increasing this black body count. And the more chaste and pure and, 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 and decent the person seems, that's the more fear that's supposed to continue to create and churn up in us. And so the location of these killings, murders, uh, the people that are committing them are getting light sentences, of course, because, oops, they, you know, yeah, okay, it's murder, but we're just going to let her go for a little while. And, you know, <laughs> look, this isn't about the forgiveness thing. But I understand uh, what took place in the sentencing and this light minor sentencing um, that was all a part of the plan to incite our people to anger and displeasure. And I believe that, I really do believe that the forgiveness uh, 
that she was shown by the victim's brother is was actually um, not it, on their agenda. I don't think that was part of their plan. And it created a, a diversion from what we were about to say of, with regards to the sentencing and it turned out to be a discussion on forgiveness. And that question and that discussion is is very pertinent and, and important right now to be having because the level of mercy you're willing to show others is the level of mercy you're going to receive. And that's the word. So I don't have a problem standing by those words based upon the word of God that has been imparted to me. If you don't agree with that, then you're just saying, I don't agree with the word of God. And that's okay. We can agree to disagree. No, we can't. I'm sorry. We can agree that we are in disagreement. That we can agree on. But beyond that, you're wrong. If you believe that we are not to forgive our enemies. And so for that reason, the children of Israel are being punished. And more. There's a reason we keep hearing of these stories where uh, for some reason we keep ending up being the ones to save the day. Don't you think that these are things that are happening as a result of the Most High showing us who we are? Where we're disarming mass murderers or we're, we're saving people from, uh, uh, you know, by carrying children to safety or, you know. And it's, um, we're not saying that we're the only so-called heroes in the, in the, in the country because there are some very uh, brave other men and women out there who do these things too. But lately it seems that there's there seems to be uh an influx of the the stories that are showing Israelites coming to the rescue so it makes me happy and it continues to show a different side of our people that others do not tend to see or embrace and uh, so the father is making sure that people understand who we are and even though we have a reason to be angry with this nation and want to see this nation destroyed um, the father has given some of us a word and a message to warn the nations and this message is to this nation and whoever ha else has an ear to hear uh, the Dallas tornado, the um, the bomb bomb cyclone uh, in Colorado and other places, and the nor'easter. Uh, up in New York and New England area, um, the the tor the, the I'm sorry the uh, tropical storm, uh, Nestor, and of course the wildfires out west. Uh, of course, other things have been been happening as well. Earthquake in Compton. Uh, this country has been hit. Uh, probably by a record number of disasters in one week. It's been one thing after another prior to that. We were dealing with uh, 
sorry I had a yawn for a moment uh, it's getting late and I really want to wrap it up but I, this word is in me and I have to share it um, prior to that we had the uh, tropical storm Imelda and that of course devastated once again the Houston Metroplex and um, many parts eastward so, uh, there's judgment, and I want to be able to break down um, more of how closely I've been watching and, and, and seeing the patterns unfold, but right now, Dallas needs to repent. Um, this country needs to repent this world needs to repent and let Yas people go there's been a terrible handling of Yas people in this land and we need to recover and restore it is the year of Jubilee and even as we should be getting restored uh, our oppressors continue to oppress and our people are, are tired and Yah has heard our cries and he has come to the rescue and he is showing his great strength in the land please do not allow his word his will to continue to fall on deaf ears. He is visiting the earth. Make no mistake about it. And again, these are not your ancestors. This is the voice, the hand, the move, and the prophetic fulfillment of the Most High God. So family, I hope y'all get some rest. Take care of yourselves. Wait for the Father to, to visit us and deliver us. And I want to make a special invitation to those who may not know. Um, when you hear someone say that they're a Hebrew Israelite, you may have an image of some cult like camp like you know person who's dressed up in a costume and yelling at people that's not what this is okay that's not what it is to be a Hebrew Israelite um, those people are pharisaical Israelites and of course we know that those people are the enemies of Yah they are not uh the true representatives of Christ in this time so um, we really don't need to hear from anyone that's preaching a false doctrine what you do need to hear is that all nations all nations are welcome in the kingdom all you have to do is repent of your sins and follow the truth follow the Most High and live according to his word and you need to acknowledge his children the true children of Israel you need to acknowledge that you cannot continue to ignore who the Israelites are and that means you're going to have to pay attention to who the Israelites are not and that's just something that rocks your doctrine unfortunately many of you maybe not all but we can't continue to skip over Revelations 2.9 and Revelations 3 9 those words are very clear 
There are those who say they are Jews and are not. I want everybody to understand. I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'm hoping that our Father will deliver us soon. I know he will based on what I'm seeing. And he wants so many more of you to come and join his family and avoid destruction, avoid disaster, sudden disaster, having to run, having to just duck and 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 hide from danger. He that he doesn't want that for you. He does not want that for you. He wants Psalm 91 for you. He wants you to be under his protection. I don't care what your skin color is. I don't care what nation you are part of. He doesn't care. He's no respecter of persons. He loves all life. Because he is life. He is the giver of life. So if you have life, he loves you. Period. Yes, he has a chosen people. But he has always used his chosen people and sent his chosen people to go and minister to the rest of the world. So this is my message to the world. Repent. Follow Yeshua. Follow his way. Don't get caught up in the details of all of this junk that they've, they've been throwing at us. They're throwing distractions daily to keep you from the truth and from hearing the facts. Don't let that happen. Listen to the Father. Listen to the Most High. He knows what he's talking about. He created you. He created this whole world. And he told every one of my, of his, uh, of his prophets, of whom I am a descendant. He told them what his plans were. And they wrote them down. And you can see them, and you can read them, and you can see that those prophecies are happening. Now, whatever doctrine you adhere to, you will not find that level of accuracy in anything written by any other people. It just won't happen. This accuracy of prophecy is spot on if you're paying attention but if you're not you're being deceived if you're not asking for the spirit of discernment to dwell with you right now or you're not in close communication and receiving counsel from someone who is you're in trouble you're in big trouble so, I know I didn't get too much into the Dallas tornado situation. That was pretty much just sort of a jump off to make sure that people understand that this isn't a coincidence. This isn't something that just, oh, you know, what? No, it, it, it happened there for a reason. It happened with the intensity that it did for a reason. It happened uh, at night for a reason. And all you have to do is acknowledge and begin to pray for understanding, repent, and claim your place in the kingdom. Otherwise, you are subjecting yourself and your family to destruction. Now, thank you for listening. I hope that everyone 
out there continues to trust the Most High to be safe and to keep their families safe and to just continue to be a provider and a protector over his people in this hour. If you are not seeking protection from the Most High, you should. Right now, make it a priority because at any given moment, as we see on a daily basis, you could be one of those people that are running for your lives or trying to duck and hide. And for the destruction, and I'll say this again in close, to be as intense and as devastating as it was, and for there not to be any fatalities associated with that storm, I am beyond thrilled. Because that should tell you, look, he's patient. He is patient. His hope and his desire is that every single soul on planet Earth would repent and turn to him. But that has to be of your own free will. And if that does not take place before the patience and grace and mercy of the Father runs out, you are going down with this, with this place. So, everyone out there, um, be safe. Love you. Hope that, um, things begin to, uh, come clear for you if you're seeking and praying uh, and if I can be a resource please do reach out thank you father for allowing me this opportunity to share this word with your people and I pray that this would be uh, an enlightenment to those who hear it and I pray that you will continue to strengthen me in the next hour and days to come hallelujah and all praises to the Most High, uh, Amen.